Welcome to another video. I have a number theory problem here saying find all primes p and integers n. It's more or less find the combination of a prime number and a natural number such that the square of the prime number minus the prime number plus 1 is equal to the cube of the natural number. In the end, we're going to get just one set of um, numbers here, one prime number and one corresponding natural number. This question was emailed to me a while ago. I've spent a lot of time trying to look at the simplest way to arrive at the answer, and I think I found a way, and I think it makes sense. Let me know what you think in the comment section after you watch the video. Let's get into the video. So the first thing I would do is try to form an opinion about what n would be or what kind of number n will be. Now look at this. I know that it doesn't matter what p is. Um, we're going to have, this is, this is going to be an odd number. Okay, whatever number is formed is going to be odd, which means n has to be an odd number. So I know that. I also can tell that because this is a square and this is a cube, p is greater than n. I'm going to establish that. So that helps me. I know that the prime number in my answer is greater than the natural number just because of this. Actually, let's start with that. So I know that, look, notice. Notice that p squared is greater than p squared minus p plus 1. How do I know? You see? Minus p plus 1 actually makes this smaller because what happens is you're subtracting. Remember, p is a prime number. The smallest prime number is 2. So, um, so what you're actually writing here is, let's say p is 2, you're saying p squared minus 2 plus 1, which is p squared minus 1. So p squared is greater than p squared minus anything, right? Okay. As long as that thing is positive, which you can see will be positive. So it means p squared is greater than this, and we said this is equal to n cubed, n cubed. So we can actually say that p squared is greater than n cubed. But we know n cubed is greater than n squared because we're talking about natural numbers now. So p squared is greater than n squared, which basically says p is greater than n. So this is a very important um, fact from this question because I will need it as I continue. So I know that p is greater than n. Okay, the second phase of the solution is to use mod 9. Now, could I have used mod 3 or mod 6 for this solution? Yes, but the restrictions will not be as good because I have too many options. So what I want to do is if you write a cube any cube, let's say one, one, zero is a cube, one is a cube, eight is a cube, uh, 27 is a cube, 64 is a cube, give me another cube, what is five cubed, 125 is a cube, okay, five cubed, six cubed is 216. Now, if you pick any cube, the remainder you will get whenever you divide by nine is either remainder zero or remainder one, or remainder 8. That's a generally known thing and you can actually establish that. And basically, it is just the numbers, all the cubes that are less than 9. Those will always be your remainder. I hope you understand how I wrote this. Now, the question is, which of these options will be relevant to the left-hand side? Okay? Now, we don't know what p is, but we know p is a prime number. Okay? And clearly, just by observing, you know that P is not 2. We can rule out 2. P is not 2. So P could be 3 or 4 or whatever. But we really cannot tell because if we write any prime number mod 9, any prime number could leave a remainder of 1 or 2. Definitely not a remainder of... Yeah, it could leave a remainder of 1 or 2 or 3 or 4. It could leave any of the 8 numbers before you get to 9. So we'll try to find out. Looking at the, um, at the equation on the left, is it possible that we will get any of these remainders from the left-hand side? Because that's what's going to match one of these options. So we check. Okay, P 
is congruent to 1 mod 9. So let's say that the prime number we're looking for is 1 mod 9. So remember the prime number is either 1 mod 9 or 2 mod 9 or 3 mod 9 or 4 mod 9 or 5 mod 9, 6 mod 9. Okay, that's what I'm going to do. So if p is congruent to 1 mod 9, then p squared minus p plus 1 will be congruent to, I'm just going to use 1 to replace the p. So it's going to be 1 squared minus 1 plus 1, which gives me 1 mod 9. Okay, so I found one answer. This one fits this profile. Okay, so I can use that, that the prime number I'm looking for is 1 mod 9. Okay, now, what if we have p is congruent to 2 mod 9? What are we going to get? This is going to be congruent to, we're going to put 2 here, 2 squared is 4, 4 minus 2 is 2, 2 plus 1 is 3, that's going to be 3 mod 9, but a cube can never be 3 mod 9, it has to be one of these, so this is not a candidate, no, okay? Now, I don't want to waste time, if you try all the numbers from here onward, you will not get any answer that matches 0 or 1 or 8. So the only option is if this is 1 mod 9. Okay? Ta 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 ta. Um, no other option works. So you will not get 0, you will not get 1, and you will not get 8. This is the only one that gives you 1. Okay, it has to be 1 mod 9. Okay, so therefore, so here, if we say that the prime, so we know that P is congruent to 1 mod 9, that is, P is equal to some 9K plus 1. That's the meaning of nine mod, uh, 1 mod 9. There's a remainder of 1 when you divide by 9. See, I'm just going to use the space to say that k is an integer, okay? k is a natural number. Let's just take a natural number, okay? Now, so we have p is equal to 9k plus 1. We already know the form of the prime number. So can the prime number be 7? No, because it does not satisfy this condition. Okay, so, now, but remember what we said, since this is the option that we are picking, we're picking, these two do not work, so I need to strike them out now. So, we know that n cubed is congruent to 1 mod 9. Now, listen to this, because this was where I, this was the key to it. This question is not complicated if you figure this out. You see this information, that the prime number I'm looking for is greater than n, okay? And I can establish that n cubed is congruent to 1 mod 9. So what about n? n is not as big as p, and you see this with modular arithmetic, you can actually reduce this to n. So you can say that if a number leaves a remainder of 1 when divided by 9, it will also leave a remainder of 1 when divided by 3. Why am I dropping it to 3? Because here, watch this, I can say that this implies that n, if you take the cube root of both sides, this implies that n is congruent to 1 mod 9. Okay, this is still correct because of this sentence. However, we do not want, want the number to be as big as 9 because what we're saying is that p is greater than n, so n is a much smaller number. To be on the safe side, it is better for you to reduce the mod that you're using for n so that you can get smaller answers than you would get for the prime number. Okay, it makes sense. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. If n is congruent to 1 mod 9, n is congruent to 1 mod any number that divides 9. And there's only one other number that divides 9, which is 3. So we can say also n 
is congruent to 1 mod 3. So, it means n can be written as 3 times. I used k here. I'm going to use, let me use m, 3 times m plus 1. That's the meaning. When you divide by 3, there's going to be a remainder of 1. So we have two equations that we can work with. This is the, this is the hardest part. Once you have these two facts established, you can move on. Okay, so now I'm going back to the original equation and I'm going to plug in P here and I'm going to plug in M here, I mean N here and see what happens. So what did we say P was? We said P is 9K plus 1. So we're going to say, then 9K plus 1 squared minus 9K plus 1 plus 1 is equal to 3m plus 1 cubed. Ooh, I forgot that part. It's n cubed. So let's distribute this and expand this. I'm going to use Pascal's triangle for this, so um, I'm not going to be explaining too much. If I square this up, I'm going to have 8 Okay, we can take out the two ones. They cancel each other out because I need space. I'm going to just delete them. What can we do? It looks like I can do some factoring, okay? If I factor out, no, I can divide everything by nine. You see that? If I divide everything by nine and then factor out, so this is gonna become nine K squared plus K. I can take out K and I'm gonna have nine K plus one, because I've divided by nine equals, this is going to be 3, and then I factor out m, it's going to be m times, this is going to be 3m squared, will it be squared? Yes, plus 3m squared plus, ta -da 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 divided by plus 3m plus 1. Okay, so here we are. Now, this is where your number, remember, everything you're dealing with is an integer. There is no, hey, what did I say that? 3m plus 1, where m is also a natural number, okay? No negative numbers right now, because we're dealing with all positive numbers. This guy has to be positive, so this guy has to be positive too, okay? So now, watch this. Ta da da tap 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 tap. Because this is an integer, this is an integer, this is an integer, this is an integer. There is no common factor between this and this. How do I know? How do I know there's no common factor? So the GCD of M and this number is 1. The GCD of this and this is 1. Clearly, from this, if you use just basic. A long division or you use a um, Euclidean algorithm you can tell because this is just there's a one here this is a multiple of this and one is added this is a multiple of m multiple of m and one is added so the GCD in either case let's say put it observe GCD of k and 9k plus 1 is equal to 1 also, GCD of M and 3M squared plus 3M plus 1 equals 1. So that means there are no common factors between these two, no common factors with, between these two. Okay, so the only way that we can have equality between these two products is if K is equal to M and this is equal to this. Now, you might say, what if 9k plus 1 equals m and this is equal to this? If you go back to this, there will be no equality the way we defined it. Okay, I don't have enough space left, but because of this condition, it forces k to be equal to m and this to be equal to this. And this is what we're going to do our 
thinking because you don't even need to think anymore. If k is equal to m, you can just go back and substitute and we have a brilliant equation to solve. So therefore we can say k equals m and 9k plus 1, 9k plus 1 is equal to 3m squared plus 3m plus 1. See, this is the key. This equation too is brilliant because with this we can find the rest of the solution. We can actually find k and m. So if k equals m and this equals this, I'm just going to use um, m. I'm going to say, okay, this is now 9m plus 1 or 9k. Well, you know what? Let's do k. Let's do the k's so we can find the prime number first. Oh, yeah, it doesn't matter. So 9k plus 1 will be equal to 3k squared. So I'm replacing m with k plus 3k plus 1. We can subtract 1 from both sides. We can collect all the terms. So we're going to end up with, if we pull everything to the side, we have 3k squared minus 6k equals 0. So that tells us that um, 3k divided by k minus 2 equals 0, which implies that k equals 0 or k equals 2. We know k equals 0 will not be a good option because that would make, where is k? That would make p to be 9 times 0 plus 1, which makes 9 equal, I mean, the prime number being 1 is not possible because 1 is not a prime number. So this is not an acceptable option. So k equals 2 is what we need. And if k equals 2, then it means m also equals 2, and I think we can find n, so, which is also equal to m. We're done. So here, we know that the prime number is going to be, where's the prime number? 9k plus 1. p is 9k plus 1, 9k plus 1, which is the same thing as p equals 9 times 2 plus 1. So we have p equals 9 times 2 is 19. Okay, and we know that n equals, where is it, 3m plus 1. And that tells us that it is n equals 3 times 2 plus 1. So we have n equals 7. And because of how I came about this, especially this was helpful for us to know that it has to be on either side, has to be 1 mod um, 9. Okay, and with that restriction and bringing this smaller, because if we didn't bring this down to 1 mod 3, we would be looking at bigger numbers and we would skip 7, you know, as an option. And this actually is the only answer. So here we have P is 19, N equals 7, and we can check it. Okay, so we got, let's box this. Check. If we check this, we got p squared. What's p squared? p squared is 19 squared minus 19 plus 1 is equal to 7 cubed. I know 7 cubed is 343. Um, 19 squared is 361. Yes. 361 minus 19 plus 1 equals 343. Check if that's correct. Yes, it is correct. Cha. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.